Rio Rancho. Uh, for now, all I'm aware of is that there's a $25 registration fee. Do you have more information? I do about have more information. Or? Yes. Pastor Mark Senna and his congregation. He's not the pastor, but he's men's minister at the church in Rio Rancho, uh, Bernalillo area. Uh, uh, the registration is two days. It's a Friday evening and about a half a day Saturday, and it includes meals and freebies and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm looking for some guys that want to go. Brian, amen. Thank you, Brian. Michael, thank you for raising your hand, okay? Before he raised his hand, I saw that. Steve, Steve, thank you very much for, for saying that. All you guys, uh, Cisco, Cisco, he can make it to Wesleyan, but he can't make it to Men's Conference. I forgot he won't be able to do that. Uh, John Rice, anybody, Michael, Christopher, uh, anybody wants to go? If you can't pay the $25, I'll pay the $25 for you. We'll get you out there. <laughs> Even Eileen's excited for him Excuse to pay me? Uh, no, we're going to stay in your tent, okay? <laughs> Those are the details you have to hammer out later, but October yeah. 11th and 12th. Yes. All right. We are having a birthday party on October 12th from 3 to 5 p.m. at Victory Home Health Care, which is off of Hot Springs Avenue. Now, this party is not for just anybody, okay? We're actually having this party for somebody near and dear to all of us. Miss. Well, let me read it here. Just to make sure I have the right person. There's Devin. only one Devin. There's only Is that one. true? Do you guys know somebody named Devin in your family? Is she, they're having a birthday party? How many years? 40 years? She must know the person. <laughs> Happy birthday to Devin. Uh, but the party is on October 12th. Wait. No, the birthday is not October 12th. What day is, the birthday actually is on the 11th, the day prior. But the, we're announcing the party in advance so we can all get a nice new outfit for the party. No. So, so let's, let's save the day. <laughs> <coughs> I said yes to the dress. Anyway, birthday, Christmas play, titled three, okay? Uh, it's it's in motion, uh, so if you'd like to help out with this uh, play that we're getting ready for for the holiday season, call Chris four two nine four three nine nine, and also the website is uh, or on Facebook.com you can go to Playtime Theater. Did I say that right? Playtime Theater Inc. and check that get it on there, okay? Um, but I did miss out on the birthdays, so I'll get to that that now. Today is September what fifteenth. Fifteenth. 15th nobody nobody having a birthday this week or an anniversary when well KLYA 95.7 our radio ministry to the city and we are on lvcornstone.com get online check us out we have some podcasts available for download and if you bless you if you need a copy of a sermon electronically let us know we can get that to you on disc or USB that should be it folks let's welcome Pastor Moore all right Let's, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, Linda, up here for a little while. Come here. Yes. <laughs> Linda has a statewide ministry. Linda is the state director for National Day of Prayer. I'm going to let her explain uh, what that's about, and then I'm going to ask you that you would help her financially as you see fit uh, to help her get to conferences, to help her buy materials, to help her do the things that she needs to do her job. So tell us about National Day of Prayer, State Director. Thank you. Wow, what a surprise. Well, I give God praise. I am the new State Coordinator for National Day of Prayer. I moved here six months ago from Arkansas. And so I'm here in New Mexico, and of all places, Las Vegas. My mom is from Las Vegas, and my dad's from Colorado, so I'm familiar with the territory. I found out a number of you know my family, the Estradas here in, 
in Vegas. Anyway, um, National Day of Prayer has been around since 19, boy, you caught me off guard, 1952, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the President of the United States uh, did a proclamation that the, we would have a day of prayer for our nation. So this is an incredible thing because we have a governmental mantle, if you will, to pray for our nation. And if you understand, and the pastor is really good about this, about talking about authority, that we have that day, which is always now, after another president signed, it's always the first Thursday in May. But it's not just a day of prayer. National Day of Prayer is about daily prayer for our nation, for our uh, government leaders, for our president, for our vice president, and for the others that lead our nation. And we want our nation to be um, blessed by the word of the Almighty God through the Bible. It's not just something you know, we're making up or whatever, but it's about Christians who understand the biblical truth of what the word says and praying for our leaders. And we have to humble ourselves in order to be um, in right alignment with God so that we can have our nation blessed. And I thank the pastor for this time. I thank Fabiola for all of her um, time throughout the last few years in which she has helped um, bring forth National Day of Prayer. I gather at the plaza um, here in Old Town. But um, anyway, I travel all over the state, and I'm learning. I'm here and there. This week, I'm leaving to go to the St. Louis region for a Native American conference because I found out New Mexico has 19 or 23 reservations and pueblos. You know, these are other nations within our state. And so I want to know how to pray for and to bless, you know, the uh, indigenous people here in the land. And so I'll be traveling Tuesday for about a week and a uh, Navajo uh, lady will be traveling with me to this Native American conference where we're gonna meet with leaders from around the United States. Long story short there is I'll be back and then I'll be traveling around the state of New Mexico meeting with other pastors and ministry leaders and such. So New Mexico's huge. It, I need to get my car and drive, so I need things like finances. This job is volunteer, and that means there is no pay, and it's through people like you, churches, businesses, um, others who are willing to donate for the cause of getting the gospel and praying for our state, New Mexico, and for our nation. So thank you. Amen. 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 So I don't apologize for catching you uh, off guard because welcome to Cornerstone Church. That's the way we do it here, okay? You. you just, uh, you, you know, this is uh, be ready in season and out of season at Cornerstone Church. You never know when, uh, when it's going to come up. And um, she's at the right place too because <laughs> we all are walking by faith. Amen? We're all doing it. Now that doesn't mean that Fabiola's not city director for National Day of Prayer anymore, okay? And I know Fabiola would probably say, well, I won't do that anymore. No, I don't think we're going to let that happen. I don't think so, Fabiola. That what? Yeah, she'll go to Santa Fe or someplace like that and leave her hometown hanging for National Day of Prayer. Amen. Okay, so this is, for, this is an offering for her. Let's pray over it. Pray over it, Mrs. Sice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shandi do robo sindar robo shindo shindo robo sindar robo shindo robo sandi skido kito ro ro do koshinas. Amen. 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 Okay. 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 Uh, we want the bucket back, though. Okay. <laughs> Somebody felt convicted after that prayer and said, Five, 500 wasn't enough. He had to throw another 100 in there or something like that. You know, one thing that we need to know, ladies and gentlemen, about ministry is that 
When God calls you to do something, it is always bigger than yourself. When God calls you to do something and you have the strength, the resources, the brain power, the education, and you say, well, I can do this because I have all of these on my resume, then it's probably not God or your vision isn't big enough. God is always going to call you to do something that is bigger than you, and that's where you need an essential element in your spiritual life called grace. And the way that you're going to access the grace to do what God has called you to do, and I'm here to tell you this morning that each and every one of you have a calling upon your life. Many of you are parents or grandparents. And how many times as parents did my wife and I say, we can't do this. And let me tell you what, parents, they get bigger and they get harder. Hello? You think that, that, that it's, uh, it's hard when they're small. You wait till they get a little bit bigger. But then we find out that God has grace for each and every one of us. And I want to tell you what. Linda has been called to, to a huge state, to a huge job within the state. It's more than just a one day a year type of a deal. And I think she's in the right position because she's going to need all the help she can get. And I want to tell you what, I believe that when God gives you vision, provision follows. And the provision is what God will give. And you know what, we look around today at Cornerstone Church and we see the provision of God. God has been good to us. God has been good to us as a congregation in our 20 plus years that we've been here. And... Uh, is he keeps getting better. I, I, I gave a little bit of money. Uh, uh, I got some money in my pocket this morning, and uh, then I emptied out my pocket, and then somebody comes with me, uh, to me with a envelope and puts more money in my, in my pocket, and uh, people think I'm bragging. I got a couple of friends. Chris Maestas is one of them. You know Chris Maestas, and I brag to Chris all the time. Money just follows me. It just follows me. It just comes. And you know what? When, I'm down, when I look down on the ground and I see a dime or a nickel or a penny, I pick it up because I know that's not all that's coming. But that's just one of the resources that God has given us. There's many, many resources that God has given us, and we need to be uh, thankful. We need to be grateful for the things that God is doing in our lives, and uh, we're, we're, we just see... Uh, we're, we're, we just continue to see the unfolding more and more. And whatever's out there, whatever's out there, whatever's coming, God has an answer and God has provision for us. And sometimes it's, uh, and many times, it's more than just, you know, we think provision of money. And uh, God has some, some wonderful things for us. Anyway, we're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 18, and we're going to start in verse 20. The title of my message is, two opinions because if you would go to verse 21 you would look at a question that the prophet is asking the people of Israel this has a lot to do with the double-minded man that we talked about last week because we looked at the double-minded man we found out that the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways we, we found out that we have the mind of Christ. And I want to tell you what. You say, well, I, 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 can, I find myself double-minded all the time. As a pastor, I find myself just as a human being, as a, as, as a, as a, a believer in Christ Jesus, I find myself double-minded many times. And the only resource that I have for my double-mindedness is the cross because when I go to the cross, it's me dying to self, dying to that old so that the new can come and I can walk in the mind of Christ and exercise the mind of Christ that he has in me. First uh, Kings chapter 18, verse 20. So Ahab sent for the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. 
And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. So today we're talking about two opinions. Can anybody tell me a little bit of the history of what's going on right about now? Anybody have any idea what's going on in the 18th chapter of 1 Kings or preceding chapters? Nobody? All right. I didn't, you know. There's been a drought in the land. There's been a drought for three years. It was a drought that Elijah the prophet had prophesied to the people that a drought was coming. You remember the different times, well, at the beginning of the drought, Elijah goes and hangs out by a river and the, and the birds feed him. You know, it, 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 you want to talk about provision this morning? People, are, people are, 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 are going through hard times throughout all of Israel for a reason. You have to understand why the reason. Why was it that they were going through a hard times? Why was there a drought? Well, uh, Elijah is not going through the drought. He's over there, finds a little brook. God sends him to a little brook, and he goes over there to a little brook, and, 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 and the birds come, and they bring him food whenever he needs it. And then when the, when the brook dries up, that's when he goes to the widow's house, and to the widow's house, he asks her, what do you have? He says, well, she says, well, all I have is just a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour, and I'm getting ready to make my last loaf of bread, and then me and my son are going to die because this is it. And there's no more oil. And, there, and he tells her, go get all the, all the flasks that you can find. And God comes and completely supplies the need in her and her son's life. Many stories going on. But most important for you to understand today is that there's been a drought in Israel for three years. My question this morning is, why? To get the people to come back to God. Michael, there was disobedience. There was more than just disobedience. Yes, it was disobedience. But let me narrow it down just a little bit. One more notch so that we can understand. Idolatry was in the land. What is idolatry? They were loving other gods. They were serving other gods. And when you get to that... Uh, uh, Second verse that I read this morning, which is verse 21. When you get to that verse and you look at it, what, 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 what Elijah has done is Elijah has called the people together. Verse 21. Well, let's go to back to verse 20 because it's there. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. When my wife and I went to Israel, we went to Mount Carmel. We went where this happened. It's in the middle of a plain. It's just out there in open ground, and it's this one little hill that's there in the middle that you've got to drive up all the way to where you go, and they have a, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it. They have a uh, sculpture, and they have a little building there, always trying to sell you something, yeah, when you get there. And... Uh, but they didn't know that Pastor Scrooge was in the bus when he came, okay? But, but I saw it, okay? I got it imprinted in my mind. Anyway, Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people. So in the midst of all this coming together, all the people of Israel come, and the king is there. And, he, and, and the prophet asked them this very, very pinpoint question he says how long will you falter between two opinions what's he what's he telling them there what's he asking them there he says yeah he says you know you, you you've been riding the fence you've been riding you've been walking the top of the spiritual wall for a little bit too long He says, but you have it, but, but today's the day that you need to make a choice. It's not unlike 
the seventh church in the third chapter of the book of Revelation to where God himself speaks to the church, to the Laodicean church, and says, he says, you think you got it all together, but you don't have it all together. He says, you're lukewarm, and that's what these people, Elijah is speaking to a lukewarm people. They've chosen Jehovah, Yahweh, the national God of Israel, but at the same time, they have another relationship going on. And it's like I said at, uh, at uh, Bible study this, this week when we were in the book of Ezekiel, how would you like it if you were married and you came home one time and your spouse had a, another lover in the house? And, and, and then your spouse said, well, they're going to be living with us now. Oh, yeah. Oh, about well, some of you ladies, you got red in the face right away. You said, well, who, who is she and what does he think? Well, yeah. Amen. And that's exactly, that's exactly what was going on in Israel. That is the constant uh, uh, thing that is going on in Israel over and over again, and it's called idolatry mixed in with their immorality, mixed in with their injustice, mixed in with the iniquity that's going on, but immorality, injustice, iniquity, and idolatry was the, 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 what, what brought Israel down in the end, okay? Elisha came to all the people once again and says, how long will you falter between two opinions? If Yahweh, look at that word, see how it's, it's once again we go through this all the time Lord why is it in all capital letters because it's talking about Yahweh okay it's talking about the tetragrammaton YHWH the Germans were the ones who pronounced it Jehovah and I believe the reason why is because a Y in German has a hard sound instead of uh, soft sound and that's where you get Jehovah from but Jehovah Yahweh is supposed to be a pronunciation of that that same the national name that's the name that God revealed to Moses at the burning bush he says who am I who should I tell when I go to the elders when I go back to Egypt and you want this job remember Moses and look at all of these people all of these people ladies and gentlemen were called to a ministry were called by God to do something that was much bigger than themselves you need to realize that you need to understand it God is going to call you to do something and when he calls you to do something he's going to call you to something bigger than yourself and that's where we say I will trust in the Lord with all my heart I will not lean, lean upon my own understanding and watch what God does he'll do it if he's really called you there he'll do it he'll make it happen and Elijah's the same way Elijah standing as one prophet watch the story Elijah said to the people, I alone, verse 22, am left a prophet of the Lord Yahweh. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. So there they are on the top of the mountain. And Baal, one of this uh, idols that, that Israel, you say, well, that, that's a god from, from Phoenicia, or that's a god from Tyre, or Sidon, or that's a god from Assyria, that's, that's a god. What are, they, what are the Jews? Well, good, good question. What the heck are the Jews doing? Well, they got into immorality. They got into idolatry. You know, and, and, you know, I, I've been, some of you watch, listen to the radio program all the time, you know this. They were, they got so brazen, the, 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 the Jewish people got so brazen that they started serving these idols out in the hills, up in the high places where the mountains and the forests were hidden. And at night they'd sneak away and they'd have their altars and they have, we went, when we went to Israel, we went to one of those places to where the, to where the altars were. I got the weirdest feeling I'd ever got from there and, and 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 then it got so bad Raymond that eventually they got those idols and they brought them into the house of God right there in the temple that all Solomon had constructed as the house for Yahweh they brought those idols and they had them here terrible terrible you know and we said well we don't do those things watch out with what you say okay 
Elijah said to the people again in verse 22, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord Yahweh. <laughs> there's 450 of them and there's one of me. Therefore, let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces, lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Then we will call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of Yahweh, and the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, said to him, it is well spoken. And I think most of us know what this story is about and how this story is going to end. But put yourself before it happens. Put yourself in Linda's position when she has to be there Tuesday and the tank's empty in her car and she needs to get a motel room and she needs to have food. Uh, well, why can't she just fast all the way over there and all the way back? I don't know, you know. Does she really need all these things? Well, you know, put yourself in the position of Elijah before it happens. Not after you've read the paragraphs, after you've read the story, after you've seen the scene and you know what's going to happen, and you say, well, it's a, it's, it's a cakewalk, it's easy. No, put yourself in Elijah's position. Elijah had faith, but Elisha needed the grace of God in his life. Elisha was called to something that was bigger than himself, bigger than his education, bigger than his pocketbook, bigger than any resource that he had, he was called to something. And that's when God shows up. And that's when God does something. So there he is standing on Mount Carmel. And he's standing as the only prophet of Yahweh. And there's 450 of these guys. But I like what Elijah does. Elijah sets the rules. <laughs> Elijah takes control of the situation and says, okay, you guys are going to falter. And it wasn't so much about the, 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 the prophets of Baal. It was the people that were there. Remember, Israel is there, and Israel is double-minded. And he says, okay, here's the rules. We're going to get two bulls. You get one bull, I'll get the other one. And you guys call upon your God and prepare him any way that you want to. All your, whatever you do and however you do it, you prepare him the way you want to and then I'll prepare him. In fact, you guys can go first. And he says, the God that answers by fire is the true God. And the people respond to him, Kyovo. Well, no, they didn't say Kyovo, but that's what they would have said if it would have happened in Chimayo, okay? Maybe in Arkansas they would have said, good enough. <laughs> Verse 24, you call on the name of your gods. I will call on the name of Yahweh. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And in other words, huh? Cisco, ring the bell. Ding, 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 ding. Round one is on. Verse 25, now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull. He says, oh, you guys go first. Choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first for your many. And call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. So he says, you do whatever you do, however you do this thing. And I don't know if there was protocol, and both of them knew what the protocol was. I don't know if the Baal prophets had one way, and, and the Jehovah prophets had another way. But he says, go for it. Go do, go do it. You guys, you guys go first. There's a lot of you guys. So they took the bull. And they prepared it. And they called the name of Baal. Now, the name Baal means master. Okay? You have, you have a, a lot of names that have this Baal added in, into it. Okay? It's like a root of a, of a, of a name. And, and Baal means master. In fact, when uh, uh, Satan in the 
New Testament was called Baalzebub, he was called Master of the Flies. It was kind of a way of putting him down, okay? It was like calling you a taco bender, okay? That's kind of the way it was. Not that there's anything wrong with it, because we've been, we've been, we've been uh, 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 bending tacos for, for some of us for 60-some years, happily so, okay? We're okay with that. So they took the bull which was given them, and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon. So I don't know what time they started, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. 11 o'clock, all I know it was morning, and they started c calling it, they prepared it, they did whatever they had to do, and they started doing their thing and doing their witchcraft. Let everybody say witchcraft. They're doing their witchcraft. <laughs> oh, my God. They were saying, oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. Hmm. Now, no, no, no. Watch. Th th this is this is what I need for you to understand. What's going on behind the scenes? What's going on behind the scenes? See, I love splitting the veil and going behind the curtain. I love seeing the supernatural, and I love being able to see the supernatural. It's just like we're, we're, as we're going through the book of Ezekiel, I was telling you, we're going through the book of Ezekiel, and there's these seraphim, and these seraphim have four wings, and, and they have two of their wings up, touching each other, and they're over there fluttering their wings, and, and it's causing a turbulence that's holding up this platform, and the throne of God is, uh, is above. The, the pla it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. The more I see it, I just... I, I'm 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 overtaken by it sometimes in the morning when I'm when I'm seeing it, but but imagine what's going on behind the scenes. What's going on behind the scenes is that Baal, who is an idol, has a demon attached to it. It's not just a carved image. It's not just a molded image. There's always a demon attached to it. Now, do you think the demon? named Baal, wanted to do something right there at that time. Do you think that demon wanted to, he's over there with matches. Have you ever been, have you ever been camping and your, and your matches got wet and you can't start a fire? Anybody over there ever been over there before? So you get the wood and, and you get the rock and you try to start, yeah, well, that's just on TV. i never seen them do it before, but I tell you what, maybe they can do it. They took the bull which was given them. They prepared it. They called on the name of Baal. They're saying, demon God, demon God, demon God, demon God, show your power. They have infiltrated, because of Jezebel and Ahab, they have infiltrated God's covenant people. And now it's like a 50-50. Well, on Saturdays we go here, and on Fridays we go over there. And we're trying to play both sides of the fence, and we're trying to see, because maybe this guy, if he doesn't answer, this one will, and maybe if he doesn't answer the way that we want to, this guy will. It's kind of like people. <laughs> I, they, they haven't been asking me questions lately. But, you know, every once in a while I have people that would come from other congregations asking me questions. You know, they want counsel. And I guess I wasn't giving them the counsel that they want. I can't figure it out why they wouldn't come back for more counsel because I said, what's your pastor telling you? You know what some people will do when they're looking for counsel? They'll go four, five, six, eight, ten people until they hear what they want to hear, and then they'll say, the voice of God has spoken, you know. And, and, and that's what these people are. Baal, speak to us. Tell us what you want. Oh, and, and Yahweh. And then we'll kind of vote on it and see which, one, which way we want to go. Welcome to America. They prepared it and called it on the name of Baal from morning till noon, saying, Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. Could you imagine the demon, the real demon, over there all wrapped up? 
<laughs> like a cowboy, you know, there he is, and they got to, and he's trying to say something, and he's trying to manifest, he's trying to, 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 to light the match and to start a fire. There's an angel on each side says, behave, boy. We're going to show these people today who's God. Because they've been faltering between two opinions. And that's the question. That's what we're trying to, 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 to determine about the people. Will they falter? How long will you falter? And I, I hear Elijah saying, no more. No more are we going to falter through two opinions. No more are we going to say, are we on this side or we're that side? My family gets mad at me all the time because I have two football teams that I like in the NFL. I like the Broncos, and I like the Cowboys. Everybody says, you can't have two. Yes, I can have two football teams if I want to. These people had two gods. They're, it's a whole different story. We won't let them get away with it. There was no voice. No one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. Oh, now they're really getting They say, man, we got a problem here. Now we're going to have to start doing our dance and our jig, and we're going to have to get out over there and leaping and yelling and screaming. That wasn't enough. So it was at noon that Elijah mocked them. Oh, I love Elijah. i got to love Elijah. What's Elijah doing now? He's taunting them. He's over there making fun of them. He's over there. They're over there jumping and, 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 and doing their thing and, and, and trying to get, you know, doing whatever it is that, Idol worshipers do, you know. Maybe but we need more drugs. We need stronger drugs, you know. Uh, they did, you know, the drugs was part of this whole idolatry thing that was going on, my brothers and sisters. Witchcraft. The spirit of pharmacia was part of it. So it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and says, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he's meditating, or he's busy, or he's on a journey, or perhaps he's sleeping and must be awakened. And it's almost like Elijah himself has gone behind the veil and looked behind the veil, and he says, yeah, they still got him cornered over there. They still got him all tied up in spiritual ropes. He can't do nothing. Do you think he wanted to do something? Do you think Baal wanted to manifest himself at that time? You better believe he would. And Ahab and Jezebel had, been, had invested in Baal. They had invested in this idolatry with the people. And it was a way of them controlling the people, really, as a way of controlling the people. So Elijah's over there mocking them. Elijah's over there making fun of them and says, you know, in fact, this is so funny. When it says, or he is busy, are we in verse 27? When it says in verse 27, or he is busy... The real translation is, anybody know what the real translation is? Excuse me? Maybe he's at the bathroom. Yeah, so, and now the, the homie knows how to mock, okay? Homie knows how to, <laughs> I think he's from Española, okay? He, he, he talks trash better than, than the guys at cell block five. I'm telling you what, he's, he's pretty good. There was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. Verse 30, then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of Yahweh that was broken down. <laughs> Why was the altar of Yahweh broken down? Just something for you to consider. Why was it in disrepair? Because they hadn't been using it. That they didn't have any. They didn't think they had any use for it anymore. Okay. So they have allowed. And the first thing that Elijah does is Elisha repairs the altar, the, the true place of worship, the true place of sacrifice. So there was an altar there at one time, but it had fallen into disrepair. He repaired the altar 
of the Lord Yahweh that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord Yahweh had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahweh, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seahs of seed, whatever that is, two seahs of seed. So what he's doing is, is he gets 12 stones, and each stone, I mean, these weren't just little rocks, okay? These were, Steve knows those type of stones, okay? He gets 12 of them, one representing every tribe, and he repairs the altar, and when he repairs the altar, he gets it ready for and he says, okay, now let's, uh, I, and I, I don't, I'm not sure he's doing this all by himself in one day, okay, but he digs a moat around it. So he gets this, this altar, and he builds an altar, 12 stones, flat rock on top, and then he digs around it, however big two sias is, you figure that out, maybe it says in your New Living Translation how big two sias is, but he digs a ditch all the way around it. He made a trench around the altar enough to hold two seals of seed, and he put wood in order. Everybody say in order. Notice, notice the detail. Notice the detail here. Notice how he's, he's doing everything, okay, by, led by the Holy Spirit. He put the wood in order. Whose order? Man's order? Whose order? The demon's order? Whose order? God's order. God's speaking to him. God's showing him how this is done. If he didn't know already, he, there's, there could have been a prescription already in how to do this, and he, but he's doing it to the detail. <laughs> Imagine all the people there, they're looking at him. Imagine all the prophets of Baal, and they're all looking at him. And he's getting 12 rocks, and he's putting them just right. And then he gets the wood, and he puts the wood underneath there just right. And they're probably saying, why don't you hurry up and, oh, no, 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 dude, no. get the wood and move it over a little bit. Let's make sure that we have it just right. And, and, and he cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time, and they did it a second time. Then he said, do it a third time, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar and also filled the trench with water. So what's he doing? He's wetting everything. Why? The fire was, he says, if this, this is either going to be a supernatural move of God, and I bet you he keeps on going back to the veil and, you're there, aren't you? You're going to come. You're going to come. On. Yeah, I'll be there. You just do your thing. And he comes back and says, yeah. Get some more. Four, four pots of water times three, 12 pots of water. And it says that they pour it all over the sacrifice. All over the sacrifice. Excuse me? And on the wood. And, on the wood, and because the, the sacrifice was right on top of the wood. Okay? So, so he gets the 12 stones. He gets the altar. He puts the wood there. He puts the sacrifice over it, the pieces of the bull. And then, and then he gets water and pour. Now, now I know what, what we would have done. We don't even use this anymore, hardly at all. But remember the old days when we used to have fire starter? You used to buy stinky stuff that you used to buy in the can wherever you want to start your charcoals. So we would have made sure this was going to work. But no, he does something bigger than himself. He does something more, and he gets water, and he just drenches it so that the trench that he built around it was full of water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and says, Yahweh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Now, here's another detail. I believe Elijah stole in for time. I believe that Elijah knows what time God is coming. The time of the evening sacrifice. And he's getting over there those stones after the 450 prophets of Baal have failed. And they're probably sitting there all sweaty and tired and everything like that. And he's putting that stone in its place and looking at him and saying, how you guys doing? How's everything going? Uh -huh. 
No, you keep your wood. I got my own wood. I, I don't need your wood. Get the wood. No, you keep your bull. I don't need my bull. I got, I, and puts it over there, cuts it, prepares it, and, he's, and he keeps on looking at his clock. He keeps on going behind the veil and saying, yeah, okay, okay. So it was time. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, verse 36, the Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. This wasn't about Elijah. This wasn't about the prophets of Baal. This was about the people who were, uh, who were ha faltering between two opinions. These were a people who really didn't know, you know, well, uh, the flesh or the spirit or, or, or you know, we're, ju we're, we're just not sure. We're just not sure. God says, I want you to show these people today. It was all about the people. It was all about the hearts of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we are in our lives today. That's where we are in our country today. That's where we are in all the dealings that you have. You are a representative. You are an ambassador of Christ wherever you go. How many people are you dealing with today that are falter, faltering between two opinions? How many people are you dealing with today that they want, the, the, they want this side and they want that side at the same time? And what Elijah, what God was doing through Elijah, what Yahweh is doing, Elijah says, it's time for them to make up their mind. But I'm going to do something, and I'm going to show them. Ultimately, the people were going to have to decide for themselves. Ultimately, the people were going to have to use the what I call is one of the greatest gifts, if not the greatest gift that God gave mankind, which is what? Free will. The power to choose. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That this people may know... It's another call. It's another, another uh, 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 chapter in this relationship that God has with Israel, with the sons of Jacob. And over and over, he's being called. He told Moses hundreds of years ago, these people have a hard heart. He told Jeremiah, these people have a hard heart. He tells Ezekiel, these people have a hard heart. But he says, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them. Today we see a church that is divided. Today we see a church that is carnal. And I hear the voice of the Lord saying, I'm going to get them. I believe that America is a backslidden country. I believe that there's so many people who have received Jesus Christ in their heart and confessed him with their mouth in America that if they would come to church all on the same Sunday, there wouldn't be enough stadiums to hold them. There are more, more left enough churches. Where are they? Oh, they came for 9-11. Oh, that was just last week that we were talking about 9-11. It was in the middle of last week. What happened on 9-11? What happened the Sunday after? What happened to the second Sunday after? What happened to the third Sunday after? They all came to church for two, three Sundays. They came back to church. All of backslidden America came. I guess they were expecting a different message. I guess they were saying, well, you don't have to let them be Lord of your life. You can have your carnal lifestyle and you can have a little bit of God at the same time and everything's going to be okay. But that wasn't the message that they got. Oh, you can blame it on the church. Well, they weren't ready and they didn't have the, the right message. Listen, the message is the same. The methods might change, but the message is the same. And I believe they got the gospel of the kingdom. I, got, I believe they got a clarion call to come to him the same way. And what God is trying to do is God is trying to bring his people back. I see a day in America, if it's not going on right now, it's coming soon, the day in America, where God will be doing things that will be supernaturally blowing our minds. 
And it's not for us. It's not so we can walk around and say, well, I raised three dead people last month. <laughs> Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear me. That this people may know. Everybody say, that this people may know. <laughs> then, uh, verse 38. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust. Hello, who's laughing? It's funny, isn't it? You want fire? He says, I'll send you fire. You want proof? I'm going to send you proof. Everything was consumed. Amen. The all-consuming fire came. The fire of the Lord fell, consumed the burnt out sacrifice, and the woods, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, Yahweh, I mean, don't let that word, Lord, knock you off a track a little bit. The real translation is Yahweh, a personal name of God, not just a title. Because to the Jewish people, the word Lord could apply as well as to Yahweh, the title could apply. But Yahweh did not apply to Baal any more than Baal applied to Yahweh. Are you with me? Do you understand the point I'm trying to make? When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, Yahweh, he is God. Yahweh, he is God. You know, I am not preaching today to a double-minded people. I'm not preaching today to a people who are faltering between two opinions. I'm preaching to a people who are dealing with double-minded people all your, all your days. All week long, you're trying to talk to friends, family, neighbors, co-workers all day long, and it's like you're speaking in Russian sometimes to them. Anybody ever get that? You ever, you ever get that, that sense? And you're letting your little light shine, and maybe it's not even through what you say. It's just who you are. You're letting your little light shine. Listen, there's a day coming. Get ready. Labors, the fields are white, my brothers and sisters, throughout all the world. Our fields are white in America. Get ready, because God's going to do something. <laughs> oh, my God. This is not a time to get off your knees. This is a time to borrow Bono's knee pads <laughs> and say, if you don't want to use them, I will. I want to go to your homes one of these days and I want to see the carpet where you kneel all worn out, those two little spots over there in, 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 in that little place. Where, and, you look, and I look at that, what's the matter there? Uh, you get all embarrassed. You say, well, pastor, that's where I pray, man. That's, that's, it's, it's all worn out because you've been doing the work of the Lord. Amen? Listen, pray for your country. Don't give up. Pray for that. God has me praying for India and for China like never before. Now I wonder, Now I find out why why China, because I'm 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 listening to uh, reports of what's going on in China and saying, Wow, do you know that China has been experiencing revival for decades and the church has grown over and over and over again. You, you, you know, God sees that, man. It's, it's, it's not just watch out, man. Watch out. India, I have no idea. But God has been having me pray for India for months now. Don't give up. Don't get tired of doing what is right. 
when the people saw it, they fell on their faces. It says, Yahweh, he is God. Yahweh, he is God. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets. Which prophets? Uh-huh, you better believe it. Those were the only prophets that were out because Elijah said, I'm the only one. Seize the prophets. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them and brought and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there. Now, I don't know about you, but 450 guys, and you got probably a couple of people holding each and every one of them in handcuffs or zip ties. You know, we would put zip ties around them, and tie them up together. And he says, we're going to take care of this scourge. We're going to take care of this disease. We're going to take care of the cancer today. Ladies and gentlemen, what does America need today? What does America need today? It needs God today. And there's only one way that we're going to get God. Is that the spirit, a heavy spirit of conviction falls upon the land and people begin to repent. If we do not see real repentance coming of America you better start buying some freeze-dried food and digging them up in the ground someplace or, or, or some, have some cellar. Because I'm telling you, things can get really... In fact, things are going to get crazy and they're going to get beautiful at the same time. Just got to be ready for it. There's a battle that we're part of. There's a battle that we are in today. The battle is for the souls of men. When we start seeing the backslider starting to come back, you'll know that right behind them are going to be the unsaved. They're going to come back right behind them. I'm asking you to continue. I'm asking you not to give up. I'm asking you not to, not, and it's like Pat, Pat had that scripture at the beginning, lean not upon your own understanding. Don't let these two things that are here uh, 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 fool you. Well, I look around and all I see and all I see is all I see. Listen. Look behind the veil. Look behind the veil and see what the Spirit of God has up his sleeve. Why? Because he loves the people. The same way that he loved the people. He, the, the love of the people came from heaven into Elijah's heart, from Elijah's heart, it came out there and says, listen, we got to take care of business today. We're living in some great times. We're living in some beautiful, beautiful times. And I know we'd like to see more and we'd like to hear more and we'd like to experience more, but God has a purpose. And God knows what he's doing. God says, listen, just, just stay close to me. If it takes you to, fa to keep on fasting, if that's your way, keep your prayer life, your fasting life, your whatever it is, don't let the fundamentals of your spiritual life begin to wane between to weaken. In fact, get them stronger. Amen? Questions before we go? Fabiola. A short testimony, okay? You better get up over here because I don't know if we're still... Uh, My sister told me, well, Pastor said something, I think a couple of weeks ago, about that ministry that we had 20 years ago, 2000, in the year World 2000. Impact Tour. Yes. And how he said that we, we hadn't really seen much fruit from that and how discouraging it was. And so this all tied in for me. My sister goes to another church, and she was asked to share her testimony. So she shared a story, and she called me to tell me about it because it concerned me. We worked at the library, both of us, 